All right, guys, welcome to another special episode of Candice. Here's my theory. I believe that the elites are aiming for clinical retardation. I'm not kidding. I, I believe that if somebody produced a study right now and said, don't drink water, 50% of people in the world would perish. They would die because they would suddenly just stop drinking water because the data says don't drink water. And obviously, I've showed you guys many times my podcast, my favorite clip on the internet this year because it explains exactly my philosophy in life. It's the reason why we designed the second edition of the Standis Cups to say don't care, built different. It's very important for you guys to take a listen to Andrew Tate explaining what we can garner from the data, as he says. Take a listen. I'm glad I'm super rich. You know, now that I'm super rich, I get to be one of those crazy rich guys who acts unusual. And they're like, oh, he's a bit eccentric, but he's rich, so he gets away with it. Like wearing a microphone on his chest. Everyone else puts a suit on, puts the, hides the microphone. I'm like, get a f microphone, bro. Don't care. Built different, don't care. One of my habits now is ignoring all data. It's great. I love when people come to me and say, actually, we've got the data to prove. To prove what, you little What are you going to prove to me? I can prove to you that the, the, the ice caps are melting. There's ice in my water right now. I'm going to leave the water unattended until the ice melts. Will the water overflow out of the cup? No. Why are all the richest, most important people in the world who are pushing this scam buying beachfront homes? Oh, but the data says. The data's from the Matrix, and you are the Matrix, and the Matrix is full of lies. Anyone who actually analyzes the data nowadays proves they're a dumbass. Have you seen that graph thing, that meme, where you have the most stupid people and the most intelligent people do the same thing? And then you have the midwit in the middle. Data is for midwits, you know? Well, the data says, yeah, the data says. Well, actually, I guess statistically. The pharmaceutical company who sells the jab made the data. Why are you even reading it? Why are you reading it? There were stupid people who sat there and said, the jab's made of 5G cellular data. And then there was extremely intelligent people like me who said, I don't trust these mother and we both didn't get the jab. All the people in the middle were like, well, the data says, and the news said, they wouldn't just make us all take a jab for no reason. Jabby jab, jabby jab. If you even look at data nowadays, you're a dumbass. You should just know. Street smart people don't need data. We've just been around. You know? I've just been around. I just know things because I've just been around on the street. If somebody's trying to give you something for free so desperately, it's probably a trap. When you're street smart like me, you're on the corner. You, your boys, some bitches. Guy comes up to you, goes, you want a hamburger? Not really. Hamburgers are good for you. If you don't eat, you'll die. Yeah. You should really have this hamburger. I don't want it. If you don't have this hamburger, you're going to lose your job. I'm going to lock you in your house. I don't trust him or his hamburger. Why were you people like... Well, do you have a study about this hamburger? Do you have some data on the hamburger? Oh, it says that protein's good for you. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> Dumbass. The guy who got the hamburger is trying to force it down your neck, pull the study out of his It's perfect. We're going to jump right into a conversation <laughs> with... <laughs> it's, it's, I've watched it too many times. Well... It's kind of funny because you probably have this also. You have a point of view and people say to you, where do you get this point of view? Why can you think that? What source does it come from? I've been around. How can you think anything else? You know, and I'm not one to get in trouble, but I, I recently watched your show when you were talking about Macron, wife, husband, whichever one it was. Dude. The dude. And people were saying to me, Andrew, what do you think about that? And I said, well, yeah, 100% his wife is a man. And they said, why? It's like, because he looks like a little and you can see it. So what more do you want to see? You can see on his face. Mm -hmm. You can see on Macron's face that he's exactly the kind of person who would be groomed by a man. Mm -hmm. so, and, so it's obvious. And then it's the common sense <clears throat> aspect where they're like, first and foremost, they are producing no evidence to the contrary. 30 years on a single picture of this person exists. Yep. You, We have plenty of pictures of his brother who suddenly went missing at the exact same time that Brigitte was born at the age of 30. Yep. 
And people don't have that common sense to go, wait, that is quite strange. Why are they not able to just easily debunk this? And instead, you're going to call everyone else crazy. And the thing that should terrify people is the fact, which you describe it as the matrix, I think that actually is the right term, is that the matrix works over time to make it seem as though the people who recognize the insanity, recognize the homosexuality, recognize the pedophilia are, in fact, the people that are crazy. Like yeah. it's a complete inversion of what's actually happening. And the saddest thing is that it works. I mean, where did Macron even come from anyway? I remember I remember that that French election. I'm certainly no expert on French politics, but I remember he popped up out of nowhere, some globalist. He was a lawyer or a banker or something. They just put him up there and then he won. The last French election, Marine Le Pen was winning and then, oh, she lost. It's like, are these elections even real anymore? Is anything even real anymore? I mean, I only have criminal cases in three countries currently. You may as well add France to the list, you know. <laughs> but, uh, I just don't believe any of it. And then Macron stands up there. And of course, he's complete globalist WEF. I remember his obsession with Merkel. Do you remember the way he used to stare at her? Mm -hmm. He used to stare at Merkel with adoring eyes. Very strange situation the French find themselves in. And when you point these things out, you point out that it's strange, right? You point out and say, look, this is unusual. Even if she is a woman, which is highly debatable. The fact that she's 30 years older and it's all just a bit weird. But if you want to mention these things, you're right. You're, you're called a crazy conspiracy theorist because so many people are so desperate to conform. You know, I came to this unfortunate realization recently, especially in light of the Kamala garbage. There's a whole bunch of people who want to be slaves. They literally want to be. You sit and say, why can't you convince people to see the truth? And then you realize it's because they don't want to see the truth. They want to be a slave because it makes them feel the same way a child feels when they get attention from their parents. They want to be good slaves to the system, and they hope that that will prevent them from getting shot. Now, we know our history. It means they'll get shot last, but they'll still get shot. Right. So you have to make a decision as a man, especially, like, do I want to die first like a hero for telling the truth, or do I want to die a few years later like a coward? And I guess that's where you see the differentiation in the opinions, the dichotomy of the different types of men who are living in the world today. But it's it's really crazy that so many people will sit there and consistently consume lies and garbage after they've been lied to so many times and they feel like they get some kind of, I don't know if it's satisfaction, I don't know if it's warmth, I don't know what they feel in their heart when they just subjugate themselves to these people. It, it, maybe it's like cuckdom, you know, they, they, they like to feel like a cuck. They like to feel stupid. There's no other way. There's a whole bunch of people who want to be enslaved to these systems. I think slavery is natural, actually. I, I thought about this for a long time because I'm, I'm going, how could you accept this? Like somebody telling you to stay at home, not see your family, double mask, d let your parents die alone. Yep. Everything spiritually should be coming online going, this is not natural, this is wrong, and I'm going to fight this. But they get in line. And even when they know it's wrong, they're still, still fearful to speak out and say that for fear of persecution. And something that I a study that I showed, like a, a study that was done by the CIA, an experiment rather, to my audience was where they sat a bunch of people in a room. This is a true CIA experiment. And 17 of them were agents and one of them was from the public, but he didn't know that he was the only person that wasn't an agent. Yep. And they held up a picture of a triangle and they went around the room and they said, what do you see? And every agent, they got, went through them first and they said, square, 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 square. It was clearly a triangle, square, 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 square. They get to that last guy and he says, square. Yeah. Knowing fully that he is seeing a triangle. Yep. So what they understand is that peer pressure, like the psychology of peer pressure is a real thing. But it's stunning to me that grown men succumb to this or something that's unbelievably yeah, wrong it, about that. Yeah, completely. And that's why they attack masculinity so heavily. Because truthfully, as a man, if you have an opinion which is different to other men, it crosses your mind you might have to fight. That's just how it goes, right? So if you're a man and you sit in that room and 17 men say it's a square and you know it's a triangle, you're probably looking them up and down going, hmm, can I beat them all? Now me, I'm built different. I'll be, I'll be like, that is a triangle, sir. <laughs> you're wrong. You're wrong. But you have to have a lot of faith in yourself to be able to do that, right? A lot of people simply don't speak out because it's a scary thing to do because now you have personal accountability and then you have to defend your opinions also. And there's a lot of people who aren't capable of or are afraid to defend their opinion. So they just think, oh, I'll just go with the flow. And that's the actual mess we're in. I don't think the mess is so much conservatives against liberals or the sane against the insane. It's this ether in between of people who are just like, ah, it doesn't matter. And I'm not interested in politics. And they're just going along with the system. 
which is probably the largest contingent of the populace. And they're just allowing this clown show to continue for as long as it's continued. And I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but ever since 2020, I don't believe any of the elections are fair at all. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that any of the people in charge have our interests at heart at all. I believe it's a massive racket where everyone is just stealing. I believe if you speak against the system, the matrix is going to come and they're going to use lawfare to try and destroy you. I said on a podcast I did seven days before Trump's assassination attempt that there's no way they're going to let him win. Then his assassination attempt happened. Thank God he survived it. That was a miracle in and of itself. That's been memory hold now. That's been disappeared from the internet. I don't know if you saw this this morning. All of the references between Bill Clinton and Jeffrey Epstein have been removed from Bill Clinton's Wikipedia page a couple of days ago. So then that's gone. Nothing's printed anymore, right? So they just changed the typing. And you try and talk to this, talk about this with people. There's people who understand you. There's people who disagree with you who are mentally unwell. But unfortunately, there's this huge contingent in the middle who are just like, ah, yeah, you know, uh, I don't really know. And I don't know. And I'm just going to go do as they say. It'll be fine. And they're so perma-distracted with garbage. And that's, I mean, I watch, I look at like a festival, for example. I'm not anti-music, but I look at a festival and I see people in the festival and they're all screaming and jumping up and down. I'm like, if you had half of, as much passion for the freedom of your children that you do for this song you've heard 10,000 times, we'd be in a much different position. But they've managed to play Satan. The entire population, and which is actually a really interesting thing. You have to sit and think, how did they make us all so placid? How has everybody just been eunuched to the point where they're sitting there going, oh, well, I can't see my parents. I can't see my, can't leave my house, but it's fine. It's, it's truly incredible. It's actually quite a remarkable thing they've managed to do. And as they turn on the PR machine, once again, they've turned on the machine for Kamala. Nobody liked her. Nobody. Not even the liberals liked her. Not even the biggest Joe Biden fans liked her. They were all saying she could, she couldn't, she's no way she could win. And here she is the most loved person on the planet, like two weeks later. It's just incredible to me. They could do COVID all over again, Candace. They could do it again. Whoa, you don't think Israel is your number one ally? It's the dumbest thing. People just say stuff. And that's how you really know that everyone's a bot. And I say this even against, you know, people who I've had respect for in the past. I really see it because they say stuff. That doesn't even make sense. It's like six feet social distancing, save lives. Israel's our number one ally and friend. Why would you even make that sense? That's an objectively on its face, stupid statement to make. They just repeat it. They just repeat it. And, they, and you're right. They don't think about it. So let's, let's think about it for everyone at home. Let's think about it. Someone comes up to me, Andrew Tate, Israel is your number one ally. I said, well, they never paid my rent. So they're not my ally. They don't cut my grass. Now, what do they do for me? It turns out nothing. So who are they allies to? Well, if are they allies to the government who are also, it seems to be my enemy? Are they allies to the people who I don't trust? When, when those senators who are robbing everybody and stealing all of the money and inflating the currency stand up and say they're our number one ally, maybe they're your number one ally because you can get an Israeli passport and disappear and hide because you're a pedophile. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're your ally, but they're certainly not mine. So why is anybody even repeating this trope? Whose ally are they? Right. That, I said that. They protect pedophiles. They literally- They're allied to the criminal class. So I'm like, where is this coming from? They also performed a terrorist attack and got away with it because of, I'm, I'm assuming the few. blackmail they have on politicians, but they, the USS Liberty, we can't even talk about that in America. Yeah. It's like this no-go zone. You can't talk about that yeah. or the press is going to label you an anti-Semite for knowing that they murdered and tried to get away with it by flying in planes, unmarked planes, and bombing the USS Liberty to drag us into their war with Egypt. Yeah. That's not my ally, not from a political standpoint, not from a personal standpoint. The second year state is perfect protecting pedophiles and allowing them to escape from America after they've molested children. And then you go, oh, we'll, we'll keep them safe here. And, and on top of that, you get to take our tax dollars. You, we can't even extradite our pedophiles. And yeah. you like, why are you saying that? And isn't an ally reciprocal? Like, shouldn't it go both ways? Like, what do they do for us? I understand we fight their wars for them and we protect them and we give them weapons and we do everything they want. That's fine. They're surrounded by enemies. For some reason, nobody seems to like them. That's fine. What do they do for us? Ever. Anything. Ever. It's they, really- No one can tell you. No one can tell you. And then, of course, people are so emotionally invested in the idea of Israel. When you mention these things, they just repeat that trope. Well, they're our number one ally. It's like, I think you need to first understand the word are, who are is, and secondly, understand the word ally, because ally is supposed to go both ways. I actually want to ask you a, a question about two people, because right now what's happening in America is the MAGA party is actually infighting. The Groypers have declared war on the MAGA party, but on top of the Groypers, people have spoken out, myself included, to say that 
obviously you survive an assassination attempt, you're going to come out of it different, you know? And so I I wanted to give Trump that runway and expect that, like, you just, you got to be feeling a little bit differently. But it doesn't feel to me like the same Trump from 2015. Uh, And obviously he's the better candidate. I want Trump to win as well. But it does seem that now that he's accepted money, that he can't be as hardcore about certain topics and certain issues as he was back in 2015 when there was no chance he was going to win you know, allegedly no chance he was going to win. And also nobody would give him money and no one would give him any airtime. And now it feels like, I don't know, like they've kind of, I don't want to say like buck broken him, but there's definitely a lot of consultants around money kind of always being the root of lies and evil yeah. or, and I believe lies by omission, not saying things that you would say because, oh, well, this person just cut you a $50 million check. Yeah. So I uh, maybe stay away from that subject because that person is, yeah. you know, from Romania and these are the Romanian interests. So, you know, Good country choice, sir. Yeah, it's like a great that. country choice. Yeah, yeah smart. Um, I'm a fan of Trump. Obviously, I hope he wins. I My view on it, if I had to guess, and of course, I have no data to back this up. I've just been around. Trump ran with a scorched earth policy and he got into power and they tried the whole Russiagate garbage. And I think Trump actually, in many ways, was very soft in his first administration. And he believed to a degree he could reason with these savages. And he mm. thought that, you know, I should put Hillary in jail. I should do these things. But- They'll take Trump Tower off me and they'll hit me with endless lawfare and it's going to be a mess. And I built this whole conglomerate of real estate and money and I'm still American and my kids live here. And if you really declare war with the deep state on that level, my children are going to end up in trouble and there's a whole bunch to consider. So he tried to be nice to them and then he realized that doesn't work because they rigged the election. When he left, they rigged the election. They keep hitting him with lawfare to try and stop him being president again. And I think there was part of his mind that said, you know what? I'm really going to get back into administration and teach these guys a lesson. And then I think something happened. Someone came along at some point, and I think perhaps that deal was done. And they said, look, you won't go to jail. Trump Tower will stay standing. Your kids will be safe in America. Everything is going to be okay. But you're going to have to bend on these few things. Mm -hmm. And I think that perhaps, I mean, fatigue makes power. Napoleon said it. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. And he's certainly no coward. But it's amazing how daily war can grind you down. I can talk from personal experience. After three years of every single day you're fighting, and that's what they do. They they know that you're too powerful a person to take out with one hit, so they just, it's like hyenas on a lion, you know, and they just bite, 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 bite. If I had to guess, I'm still praying for a Trump victory. I still think he's going to be the best president. I still think he's going to do his very best. I just feel like somewhere along the line, something has been agreed to, to prevent post-presidency or post-death for his, for his empire and for his children. There seems to be some kind of deal somewhere. Again, I have no data on this. I've just been around. I feel like, I mean, you look at the streets. Let's talk about the streets, right? And the gangs and they're out and they're all, all, all killing each other. And then eventually you see one gang member walk past another gang member and they don't kill each other. And you're like, mm. something's been talked about now. It was different before. And it just kind of feels that way to me. I don't know exactly what the deal is. I'm not even going to say that I blame the guy for taking it. Mm. But some kind of agreement's been made, I feel like. I feel the same, and I'm, I'm wondering if you do as well. Elon Musk seems a little bit different too. And I was, I will admit, I was kind of all in on Elon Musk. Like I really thought, and, and I still give him tons of credit, but yeah. he has fought a war that few people will ever understand really what he went through to really rescue speech at a moment where it was oh, going it was to over. be yeah. the darkening. It was over. If they had gotten Twitter, it would have been done. And we saw what was happening, obviously, with all the COVID stuff, taking videos down of people t- talking about their own experiences with, with the shot. And then Elon Musk rescued Twitter and he went to war with them. I mean, you remember him on stage screaming at Bob, I think it was Bob Iger of Disney yeah. and saying, you're not going to blackmail me and do all of these things. And now it seems, and I don't want to say that he's been blackmailed at all, but I just feel like it's a different Elon. And it could be what you're what you're speaking about. Day in and day out, there is going to be some sort of a fatigue that manifests of having to fight people with a tremendous amount of, amount of power who do not let up one single day. Oh, they never let up. And, and you have to choose your enemies, right? And sometimes you have to do a deal with people who you perhaps don't even always want to do a deal with to survive. It's mm-hmm. difficult at the very, very top. We're talking about the highest possible echelons of power. And there's a lot of different interests coming your way. And you have to sit there and go, can I really war all of them? Or can I just ally with this one team? Which is unfortunate because people who know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking about. It seems to be the same team every time. Mm -hmm. If I can just ally with this one team, I'm good against everything else. Right. And then people are sitting in a position and they're like, yeah, I guess, I mean, I want to live and 
I want my children to live. And because it comes down to that, I don't think many people realize how violent the world is. We live in a world now where we have all of these facades on top of violence, but really the world is just guns and bullets and violence. That's the reality of the world. When we talk about something like a court case, what is a court case? Well, a court case is a piece of paper, but if there was no threat of violence behind it, I wouldn't go or no one would go, right? You get a speeding ticket. You don't pay the ticket. They add more money. You don't pay it. They say, go to court. You don't go. They send another summons. You don't go. They send an officer. He says, come to court. You say, no, violence. It's all just garbage on top of violence. And at the highest echelons of power, what they normally do is they skip all the garbage first. They'll sit down and say, look, you can do whatever and you can be Mr. Smartass, but it doesn't matter how much money you have or how powerful you believe you are, but let's kill people. And you have children and they're going to die. And I've been around. Now, let's, let's talk about this professionally. If I know drug gangs who do that over control of a street corner, you're telling me they're not going to do that for control of the largest economies on the planet? You're telling me there's not going to be a single conversation about the fact that your children are walking the street for the largest economies on the planet? It's, it's a very scary world these, these men live in. And I feel like they've had to do a deal with certain interests to survive, unfortunately. And it kind of feels that way and it's scary. And then you end up looking at your own position and you're like, okay, well, I do run my mouth a lot. But having a political view and having actual power are different things. These people have actual power to press buttons. And those are the ones they have to keep a, keep their finger on. So it's, 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 I don't want to say anything bad about Elon. I really agree with you. He truly saved the world. Mm -hmm. But it's just a hypocrisy in so many people's views. You know, you, you talk, I talk to people and they're anti, uh, let's say the UK right now with the locking down everybody for telling the truth about the immigration. And they, they understand that the native people of the UK want to keep their country British and they want to protect it. And they completely understand that. But then they're against Gaza. And I'm like, to me, it's, you either, you either believe in people's ancestral light to their homeland and to defend it, or you don't. But people seem to always have this hypocrisy on certain issues. It's very interesting. We know that a lot of these people in our government are being blackmailed. I wonder why. I personally want to hear my conspiracy theorists. I think pornography websites are basically they're able to figure out what your demented interests are. So these people, they're making Let's you more and go. more perverse, yeah. more and more perverse. Suddenly you're watching some weird stuff and then they got you watching some 12-year-old girl, whatever it is. Boom. You're yep. under their control. And I think this is what Jeffrey Epstein, all of this stuff is about getting men who would be in positions of power to acquiesce to some like pedophilic pornography. And then they're under their control. I really believe that. I think you're right. And there's two things I'm going to say. First, I'm going to say they've checked my hard drives. And I love to say that to everybody who says, Andrew, you're a human trafficker. They've literally checked my hard drives. For the last four years, my hard drives have been checked. Check the hard drives of 99% of people in the mainstream. Go check their hard drives. Here we are, four years into this human trafficking garbage. No one's even seen a video or a picture of a single woman claiming to be human trafficked. Mm -hmm. Right? It's completely insane. Secondly, you're right. There's also a psychological component, which I think is ties into the masculine, because men are built in a way where we like to show dominance. And you show dominance in many different ways. But one of the ways you do it is by having access to things other people can't have access to. So I feel like if you get these losers and then you put them in a position of power for the first time in their life, and then you tell them that nobody's allowed to be a pedophile, but you are. That actually makes it more tempting than it was before, not because of the pedophilic interest. It's because they're allowed to do something others can't do. And that's a power ego trip, which, which once again, makes it more appealing. It's kind of interesting how the male mind will work. But I know if you take a, if you take an idiot and you give him some power and say, you can do this, but no one else can, he's going to be tempted by that thing, no matter what it is. I mean, that's why men do a lot of things. That's the reason we buy fancy cars. Is it really the car or is it because other people can't get it? That's the whole point. It's the peacocking. It's like, look what I can do. And amongst their perverse social circles, I guess it's a, it's a badge of honor to a degree. Mm -hmm. And then we're also going to talk about the fact that a lot of these men are not particularly attractive and haven't been attractive their whole lives. Like I have another theory. And once again, I have no data at all to back this up, but I find it very interesting that it's Western politicians, which are primarily caught up with these things. Primarily, you know, like you, you see a Russian billionaire, a Russian oligarch, whatever. And he has a wife and then he gets caught cheating with his girlfriend. He has some girlfriend somewhere. Cool. And then we'll be like, ah, oh, that's terrible. That uh, Yeah, cool. It's terrible. Fine. But then what do the Western politicians do? They, they walk around with Mike, sorry, Michelle. <laughs> they walk around with their wife and then they get caught on islands. 
So, like, is that any better? Well, like, why is that are worse? Western politicians gay? That's another thing. And that, and that is what kind of leads me to believe that a lot of these people are being blackmailed and they're being selected for these positions. I mean, Emmanuel Macron is a homosexual. There's no question about that. Zelensky is a homosexual. Yep. You've got, uh, I, I was going to say, I almost said Fidel Castro. <laughs> uh, Trudeau, Fidel's son, um, you got Trudeau. He's a, a homosexual. Yep. Barack Obama was a homosexual. Yep. And then finally, when we get in the West, a president who's definitely not a homosexual, Donald Trump. The entire, they just freak out. They completely lose their minds. This guy cannot be president. He's not allowed to be president because there's no aspect of the most extreme form of blackmail, which is like, if we know that you have engaged in pedophilia, that you've been involved in any of these weird sexual scenarios, we can control you in office. And there's obviously the deep state thing is not a conspiracy theory. It's part of the reason why they didn't want Tucker to conduct that interview with Putin. Because the the first thing Putin said is like, you know, I don't deal with your president. I'm dealing with the CIA. Yeah. Right. That is the deep state. He's like, you didn't, who didn't even Talk to yeah, him. Well, yeah. The CIA is is who's controlling your nations, which means that our d- democracy, the republic, it's it's an illusion. Yep. Oh, one hundred percent true. And when I say things, I don't obviously exceptions disprove the rule. I talk in the general, but in general, it is the masculine which protects the society in general. And in general, feminine are more accepting of certain things, and gays are closer to the feminine. So we say that we have men in charge. None of these people you named are men. None of them are masculine. There's nothing masculine about them. The true masculine essence is being prepared to die on a hill. And the number one thing we died for since the dawn of human time was our land and our women and our children. That's what we died for. And the reason we were prepared to die for them is because we know we could never be assimilated into another tribe. If there was another tribe on the other side of the hill, even if they outnumbered us 10 to 1, we knew that if they managed to get into the village, we were dead. The women can assimilate into their tribe because the women can join their tribe and have children. The women will be taken. We die. So we're prepared to fight. So the masculine essence, truthfully, is to be able to stand up against an army you know you can't beat and fight to the bitter end. And that's why they don't want anyone masculine in power because then they can't be influenced. We just talked about those shadow figures making the phone calls. We don't want anyone who sends their like Trump and says, no, I don't care. That's not how this is going to go. So they like weakness. So even the idea of having a man in charge, all these people we just named aren't men. They're homosexual, which brings them pretty much close to the girls. And, and when I say girls, not in a negative, insulting way, I'm trying to explain the feminine mindset of we can assimilate with the enemy more than we must fight and die on this hill with the enemy. And that's why they're doing it all. And you're right. It's it's certainly a coincidence. And it's also an extremely interesting coincidence that, I mean, global homo LGBT, that is the culture of the West now. It's the number one thing you can't insult. You can't go against. You can't degrade. You can't, you can't, you can burn an American flag before you can burn a pride flag. You'll catch a prison term for that. It's truly the new God. You can insult Jesus all day long. But you can't insult LGBT in a Christian country. And if you look at any of the American embassies in all of their vassal states, the first thing they do is try and push this LGBT insanity. They try and push this global homo everywhere they can to erode the masculine spirit. We talk about how the family is under attack, and it certainly is. There's a lot of ways it's under attack. LGBT is one of them. It's one of the things they use. But, I mean, there's a million different ways they've destroyed the nucleus of the cell. I was having this conversation the other day. I was talking to somebody and we were saying, well, <clears throat> we're talking about men dying on hills, like I just said. It was after my Jesus protest, after I protested, because I was supposed to go to jail for that because I didn't have a license. I didn't have a permit to protest. I'm on judicial control. I'm supposed to get six months mandatory. So I said bye to everyone. I said to Tristan, ready for jail, packed a bag, went there to go to jail. So put me in jail for, 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 for respecting Jesus. Put me in jail. I dare you. And even they knew better than that. So they were just like, ah. Oh, Please, please go home. (laughs) So they didn't put me in jail. But um, I was ready to do it. And I was talking about dying on a hill. And I was talking to a girl. And she's like, yeah, but you know, men aren't men anymore. And I said, but this is the thing that's so interesting if you actually analyze how they've destroyed society. Because you're right, men aren't men anymore. But if you want to talk about dying on hills, you don't just need rich men or famous men. You actually need the common man. You need every man. And most men in my position, especially financially, are not interested in getting in any kind of trouble. Right? We're interested in protecting our profits more than we are the protecting a particular street or a particular society or a particular ideal. Most of the people at my level of wealth just sell out and just bounce. Mm. So I'm like, you need the common man to be prepared to die on a hill. And that's why certain uh, agendas, like when you talk about this LGBT stuff or when they talk about or they show that if you marry a woman and that woman betrays you and she wants the son's penis chopped off, then she's going to win. Or feminism or all these different things. I tried to explain to her that if a man doesn't feel like he's the king of his own household, why would he feel like he has any duty to protect anything? 
right? So we don't even have common men with a woman having a family in a, in a society and the man feels like he's the head of the house and he feels like he has a duty to defend that house. Even the people who, the common man and the common woman, when they are getting together, the man doesn't feel like he's the king of the house, so he doesn't feel like he has an obligation to protect it. And then there's a whole bunch of men, a large swath of the population, who don't get any girls at all. And girls are just on social media trying to chase the top 5% of men who are only interested in protecting their profits and nothing else, who are globalist anyway, because they fly all around the world. And we look at Western society as a whole. I was talking to this girl and she's like, yeah, but men don't stick up for us. I'm like, the man you need to stick up for you is the exact kind of man you ignore. You don't even reply to his messages. You want the guy over there in Mykonos who has no interest in anything but yacht fuel pricing. Mm -hmm. So like society is actually so truly broken that they've managed to just infiltrate it from every single level because the nucleus of the cell is damaged. And LGBT is another huge part of that, right? They, they are so desperate to prevent the idea of a man loving a woman having kids and the man being the head of the house and the man being prepared to protect that house from all ideals. That's what they're scared of the most. Well, this, is, this gets into why I think that they attacked you. It actually wasn't my idea. Uh, so I have to give credit here to Dave Smith because he's, he's wonderful. And I had him on for a couple of hours uh, last week. And he introduced a fact to me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is totally why they attacked Donald Trump. It's why they attacked you. He was actually referring to David Duke and how there was this full media left and right um, attempt when he was running for governor to take him down and how somebody had written an article about how strange it was because they tried to say it was because he was in the KKK. But obviously people that were in the KKK just went on and became the Democrat Party. Yeah. Like nobody cared about that. Yeah. And actually what it was was that he unexpectedly galvanized the populist right. And he said it's the only thing that the establishment is actually really fearful of is people that for whatever reason are able to galvanize real men. He's like, you know, the populist left, nobody cares. Like, you know, the blue hair, tattoos, skateboarders. But the populist right are people who know how to shoot, who know how to hunt, and yeah. who will go to war for their families. Yeah. So any person that unexpectedly galvanizes men, men that like embody true natural masculinity is going to be attacked by the matrix. I never understood why you were so, it made no sense to me. It's like, I met you with George yeah. years ago. And then suddenly I looked up and every single person was doing like an Andrew Tate is this video. And then I realized, oh, okay. After Dave Smith put that piece together for me, I'm like, he unexpectedly galvanized what would be the populist right. You're talking about men returning yeah. to masculinity. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what they say. You can be great. All this stuff. That cannot happen when they're trying to turn everyone into a homosexual because it's easier to subjugate homosexuals because. Well, they're used to bending to over. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's what, and that's what the government wants you to do, right? They're used to bending over. In fact, they quite like it, which is exactly what the government wants you to do. And, uh. And no, I, I think you're right. I I was fortunate or unfortunate enough to reach such a large subsect of the population. And I was making it clear that masculinity in some on some level is saying no. Mm -hmm. That's what being a man is. Being a man is saying no. Even if you look at raising a child, right? It's the father who's typically the disciplinarian saying no. And they've tried to label that as hateful. They try and label you as hateful when you have standards. But truthfully, you love things, right? If you love your family, you're, you hate everything that's against your family. There's no light without dark. So they'll just say you're hateful because you're anti-LGBT and you're anti-whatever. But truthfully, you love something else. And they try and miss that part out. And I managed to be massively successful, primarily also with young males, which re they really got upset about because it was a con perfect storm that ended up putting me in jail. But I had all these young males following me and then I had my program that allowed them to make money and they start making more money than their teachers and they're going to school saying, I don't need you anymore and blah, blah, blah. Then they were holding me accountable for absolutely everything anyone ever said. The number of articles that have been printed about me where they say some guy has done some heinous crime and he followed Andrew Tate on Twitter. 9.8 million people follow me on Twitter, right? It's completely insane they try and tie these things to me. I have a strong suspicion Keir Starmer is going to come at me. I'll say it here first. He's going to try and say I incited the riots for saying you should have a border. But that's what I think they're going to try and do. Everything is automatically my fault. The Matrix is just out to get me. There are people in rooms in three or four different countries who are just sitting there trying to find a way to put me in jail. It's kind of scary. But yeah, I guess there's no light without dark. You you can't cast you you can't shine bright without casting a shadow and my basic message has always been, yeah, the true essence of masculinity which is saying no and not being afraid to be that person in the room who disagrees with the 17 people. You know, that's that's what it's truthfully about and that's what they're scared of and and they they want you to instead bend over. And I don't think many people at home actually understand how you know, you say you've been around. COVID was a perfect example, but there's a lot of examples of it. But when you've seen enough of life, you see how power corrupts people and how evil people can actually be. I think the large swath of the populace who are just 
slowly going along with all of this. They don't believe that people are inherently evil. They're like, oh, well, I'm not evil. And why would they do that? I heard that all the time. Why would they make us get an injection if it doesn't help us? Why would they? Why would they? I don't think they understand the true dark hearts that come from a man who just wants to satisfy his ego. There are people out there who just liked to laugh. They like to laugh at you wearing a mask and injecting yourself with poison. They thought it was funny. And, and power absolutely corrupts. We're run by these people in the world now. They're born into these families or they're so, they're so corrupted morally, but also financially. Money's not even real. We talk about a lot of things. People say, oh, it's all about the money. And I say that is such an optimistic view that you believe it's all about the money because it's not about the money. It's about controlling people and it's about destroying their spirits. It's about destroying their souls. These people print money. Mm -hmm. Why do they need money? They print it. They don't have to make it. They just press a button. If you think they're doing things for money, then you don't understand how deep the rabbit hole goes. They don't actually care about money, which is why they destroyed the whole economy in the first place. They don't care about money. What they care about is making you comply. For the same reason a loser becomes a police officer. They're bullies and they're cowards and they have no actual innate power and they're empty inside and they don't believe in anything. And they want you to comply. They want you to obey. They want to intimidate you so they feel like they're something. That's why weak people in charge are so dangerous because we all see what they do once they're weak. I saw Keir Starmer's stupid face. Put me in jail. I saw his stupid face standing up there. Oh, we're going to arrest everyone trying to act like a tough guy. I saw the weakness in his eyes. I know what kind of person he is. He's not a good person. And he's saying the people of the UK are not allowed a point of view anymore. You're not allowed to speak. Full Stasi. It's incredible. It's actually quite scary. And they ran these programs to even see how they could create a psychopath, right? And how they figured out that they could create a psychopath was molestation was a component of this, like molest them from the time that they are a child. Yeah. And so I don't think people understand that if a man was raped when he was a child yeah. and then was exposed to all of these other elements and then becomes a world leader, he has an element of psycho psychopathology that is has been intentionally bred into him. Yep. And he has been and he will do things in a way that you will be shocked. People talked about how Emmanuel Macron during COVID, the French people were saying like they realized he was a psychopath. Yep. Like there was something he was getting, like there was a sadistic element in oh, they love torturing it. Oh, they love people it. in a way yep. that for example, if you had a woman with a family, this is why even saying like women should have families before you allow them to go climb a ladder, they are removing these aspects that are natural where you're going, oh, maybe I shouldn't torture these people and let these people die alone. Well, these leaders don't think that way. Like you have to confront the actual evil that we are facing. Like this is a cult of people and they are literally deriving pleasure from your pain. Well, we, let's talk about a historical, let's use some historical context. We're in the country of Romania. So Dracula is based here in Transylvania. Dracula is based on Vlad the Impaler, which was a man who had a castle about three hours from here. And he was famous for impaling people. He put a spike up one hole and out the other. And he'd impale them and stick them out on the streets. And what he was doing is when he was fighting the Ottomans, every time he'd kill an Ottoman, he'd impale them. But the Ottoman army outnumbered his six, seven to one. So he decided to try and scare them. So he went into local villages of his own people and impaled them and just stuck them on sticks and just put them all along the road. So when the Ottomans started marching, they'd march for hours seeing, seeing all these impaled people. He impaled people and chose impalement and got pleasure from impaling people because he was molested as a child. Because he, because the Ottomans, when they got hold of him, sodomized him. So when he became the leader, he thought, oh, I'll show you all a lesson. And he, and he impaled everybody. That was his thing. Yeah. So that exactly what you just said, exactly what you just said. These people are morally corrupted. And if you sit there and think that these leaders have any interest at all in you, you know, it's kind of interesting to me. People always say, ah, oh, the politicians are so stupid. And once again, that's a very optimistic view. They're not stupid. They know what they're doing. And you are confused and you think they're stupid because you think they work for you. You think, ah, I hire the pol I hire the politician. The politician is my representative, and he's going to go there to represent my interests. And when he doesn't represent your interests, you think he's dumb. No, he works for someone else. He uses this whole "you can vote for me" democracy garbage to allow you to put to allow you to 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 accept him sitting up there and doing the opposite of absolutely everything you've ever asked for. There's not a single politician doing anything any of their people have ever asked for nearly ever in the West. They work for someone else. They work for shadow lobbies and hidden interests and big money and banks. And they work for a completely different team. They're doing the exact right votes. They're voting exactly how they're supposed to. They know they're doing their job fantastically. Your confusion is you believe they give a shit about you. And they never have and they don't. And we could talk about all of this, like I said, philosophically, but it's very interesting because the world is cyclical and everything goes around in circles. You know, you have an you have a king who's in charge of his empire, and after a while, the king 
son is he's still a good king but he's not as good and then the next king's son has just been too spoiled and everything becomes decadent and you don't want them to be king anymore and there's a revolution and you fight for democracy and then democracy comes and there's a fantastic democracy at the beginning and everybody cares and now three or four generations later everyone's just robbing and stealing as much as they can and nobody cares about the population anymore and now you have people inside of america who would very happily put trump as king for the rest of his life and put his son in charge and then you go back to royalty it's like the world is cyclical and nothing lasts forever Ever. And when I talk to Americans, especially, they don't have this concept that America can fall. They're like, oh, but, but what will happen to America? I'm like, it's going to fall. I'm like, what do you mean it's going to fall? Nothing lasts forever. If you lived in Rome and you had these beautiful coliseums and these marble arches and you're wearing your robe and you had all your slaves and you're eating grapes, you can't ever imagine it on fire. One day, one day you woke up and you looked out at Rome and you were like, no way. This is the world. This is the civilized world. This is Rome. There's nowhere else. Still burnt down. That's what happens with decadence over time. And everyone talks about the, the fall of Rome and we compare it to the fall of the West. And it, I mean, there's a lot of similarities. The fact that the, the native men grew decadent. They didn't want to go to war. They didn't want to protect it anymore. They decided to open the gates to the barbarians instead to prevent them from setting everything on fire. They said, y'all, you can come be Roman. They came in, were dissatisfied with what they had. And before you know, there's an internal rebellion and everything burnt. And it's, it's, it's really interesting to watch America as it is now. And the answer to all of these things, I mean, it starts, it starts with masculinity at home. But I think the reason they actually fear Trump so heavily is not because he's going to make any large policy changes, because they still have their fingers on all of the strings. And even if he makes a change, they can change it right back. They're scared of the culture shift. They're scared of Trump winning because it's going to inspire men to be more masculine. And that's what they're actually afraid of. Right. They're afraid of a, a big man being a big man. They're afraid of him standing up and saying things. You know, they are furious. This reporter you named who I don't even know who she is. That's how insignificant she is. Mm -hmm. People like them can't stand the fact that when he says grab her by the p we're like, so? I literally so, couldn't have cared less yeah, about that. So, like, this is like locker room talk. Who yeah, cares? Who cares? Who cares? I was like, what do you mean you don't care? It's like, I don't care. You know what's really interesting about American elections? I've always found this interesting because I watched all the rigged elections all around the globe and they're all rigged. But the American election is a very interesting one because it's the only election I've ever seen in the world where everyone is obsessed with killing their own children. There's no other election I've ever seen this. I've never seen the French talk about it. I don't see the British talk about it. It's not even on the agenda. And I was talking to somebody who I'm actually quite personally close with, and they were a Joe Biden supporter, and they now admit that Joe Biden was corrupt, and they admit that COVID was wrong, and they admit the vaccine's poison, they admit all of these things. I'm like, so you're voting Trump. It's just like, ah, oh, but I can't vote Trump because of Roe versus Wade. I was like, listen, we're talking about World War III, Israel, Lebanon, Gaza, Iran, World War III, Russia, Ukraine. We're talking about inflation. Nobody can even pay their bills. Talk about an open border where thousands of people without passports are parading across the border, blood on the streets, drugs on the street. Don't you think there's more important things at which we you can kill your own child? How stupid are you? The fact these people even exist shows that it's almost over for the West. The fact there are people who still believe that Kamala is going to somehow be a good leader. There sh it should be 99% Trump. The fact it's even 30%. Who are these humans? Name one time she stood up and said how she's going to fix a single problem. I'd love to sit with her and say, Kamala, okay, I'm going to give you a fair shot. Never met you before. Please explain an issue and explain to me your compendious plan of how you're going to fix that issue. Right. In two minutes, go. Uh, inflation's bad. We know. How are you going to fix it? We need more money. Yeah, we know. How are you going to fix it? She can't even answer a question. And there's people out there sitting there going, yeah, she's good. Why is she good? Well. She's a woman. Bro, it's so over. It's so incredible. It's like, it's incredible how just psyop people can be. Mm -hmm. It's scary. Well, that, that, that stuff is what's bred in the classrooms. And that's why I really do believe, well, it, there's no question, like our, our, education system, even from kindergarten, was established by communists. Like they, we had this huge influx of people. It's actually a really important time in, in world history for people to realize the 1848 or so to speak, they tried to, to overthrow what today is Germany and it failed. And then a bunch of them who tried to overthrow the government came to America and they went on to become Pfizer, people who instituted kindergarten. Yeah. And I think that really when our government got completely taken over, like McCarthy was actually a hero saying like commies are, are here. Yeah. We're taught in the classroom that he was like this paranoid person. No, he was trying to save America. Yeah. 
America died the day they shot JFK. The last you know, yeah. Catholic president shot in broad daylight by the deep state they took over because he was going to shatter it. He had realized yeah. that the commies were in control. I mean, the CIA doesn't represent American interests at all. Like they're they're all about just subjugating the world. They're global global elites. Yeah. Um, I think the CIA and the Mossad are the exact same organization. Yeah. But it's fascinating to see that you do see these this recurrence of people that are repeating things that they've learned in the classroom over and over again. Feminism is implemented in the American mindset for women from I mean from the time we are in grade school. From the time, I mean, even little projects they're doing, like to try to basically let them know that the most important thing is standing up for female rights. And so there are these like childhood traumas that they hit on when they say like, "Oh, abortion," and you're like, "Oh, and in high school I was taught like you know that if I if we, I don't fight about this issue and we give the state's going to control my body, it's completely made up and it's a nonsense. But it's psychological conditioning that's hard to break because it happens when you're a child. In the same way that those studies proved, you molest a kid, then for life you can kind of create this person into a psychopath, and yep. you will see that there is a thread between men that have been molested and they do become psychopaths. Like, I mean, and they hate in a way that doesn't make sense to most people. And it's the same thing for these women. Like these feminists don't even realize it's like a childhood trauma. They made you watch some movie in health class and told you that your rights are going to be taken away unless you're allowed to kill your baby. All the, it's a nonsense. All, it's insane. Bro, the state's, they believe the state's going to control your body, but they'll get the injection. Same mm -hmm. people will get all the vaccine injections when you talk about controlling your body. Mm -hmm. You're right. It's a, it's a massive logic fail. And I mean- like I said, misogynist, blah, blah. But feminism is one of the most destructive mindsets they've installed in the entire population because feminism prevents birth rates. And I mean, you can argue about a hundred different things, but you'd like to agree that if you have a population, the population needs to sustain itself at least, right? You'd say if you have a, a thousand people and you want to have a civilization of a thousand people in 200 years from then, they need to have children. We could all agree that population is important, right? Feminism is extremely destructive to that. It's destructive because it makes the women not want to have kids. But more importantly, it makes men not want to have kids with the feminists. I, you can't tolerate them. They're intolerable people. They're the worst possible people. I think men build and protect society. We're certainly building it. We're failing to protect it. But women have the magic. Women have the ability to reproduce and birth rates are falling. It's kind of interesting. You look at why the borders are open or why all these people are flooding into the nation, which is thinning the culture. We'll talk about that in a second. But I guess from a macro and a micro, you look at things differently. Like if you look at these two cups close up, you can see they're very different things. But if you look at them from space, they're just two cups. And I think the people who are in charge of the world are saying, okay, well, birth rates have been decimated. That's being done. You could argue purposefully because they want to get rid of, we talk about the white replacement. I don't think it's so much about white people. I think it's about entitled people. I think they don't like that the average Westerner now wants medical care and sick pay and holidays, and they don't want any of this. They want to get rid of all the people who have standards for themselves and their quality of life, and they want to replace them with second world and third world slaves who will just work endlessly. That's what the globalists want. So they're trying to remove by destroying the, the birth rates of the native populations because they have standards for themselves, and they're trying to replace them with people who they believe will just do endless work forever. Turns out that's not the case. A lot of them don't even work at all. But from the macro, it's just person, person. To them, they're the same. If you're living inside of that society, you understand that's not the case. You can be a Christian from a particular area or a particular ethnicity and your town has always been a certain way and you have someone come in from a completely other side of the world with a completely different mindset, completely different view on society and how they should function, and your society is being degraded. But what's the answer to these things? Well, the answer to these things are women need to have children. If women won't have children, it's over. I put a tweet up that really pissed off white people. I don't know if you saw it. And they got really mad. It went super viral. I'll send it to you. And I was saying to the white people that it's over. I was saying the white race and all you Christian crusaders and white people and everyone who's sitting up and talking about how important it is you need to restore the West to Christianity and this white ethno state and Nick Fuentes and all these people. And Nick will actually agree with on a lot of things. If you're not having kids, you don't have a future. Mm -hmm. If you're not having children, you don't have a future. That's the bottom line of it, right? So we, we, they talk and they insult these immigrants, which I completely understand why they do it. They're like, we're going to have mass deportations, which is a fantasy. And they're saying, we're going to keep our countries for us. No, you're not. Because an immigrant turns up and has seven, eight children. You're paying for it with your taxes. <laughs> and you can't convince your wife to have more than one because she wants Chanel bags. Well, then, then how are you going to have a future, right? You can argue whether it's the weakness of the man. I don't know if it's the weakness of the man or if it's the feminism that's inside of the woman. I don't know what it is. But I even just started doing this experiment when I wrote that tweet out. I was like, how many white families, pure white families do I know, outside of the Mormons, they do all right, that have more than two or three kids? There's hardly any. 
So you could talk about the replacement of white nations. Yeah, it's happening because there's no native birth rate. And that's down to feminism. And that's down to this whole gender dynamic being broken. Well, it's, they're also trying to convince women to act like men and for men to act like women. I mean, even straight men are homosexual. And I'm just, that's, like, 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 that's how I feel. Even men that are straight, I'm like, but you act like a homosexual. And it was it was one of those things that people were asking me, you know, I, I didn't actually feel like, and this is kind of surprising because it was the UK, that I even met real men until I went to the UK. Like, there's like, it was very hard for me in America. I, I will say like I was in New York City. So there's obviously yeah, yeah. homosexual straight men. You know yeah. what I'm saying yeah. here. And then I get to the UK and then I meet my husband and like, he hunts, he shoots, yeah. he knows how to skin an animal. And I'm like, yeah. okay, that's what I want. Like I want a masculine yeah. man. And so it's interesting because you've sort of, you and your brother have opened up this debate in America about what is true masculinity, right? This is the argument. They're not truly masculine. Oh, like you don't, you shouldn't follow that. Like what's truly masculine? And they'll, and they'll, you ask, okay, then what is your prototype? Tell me who is, who we should be following. If it's not the Tate brothers, yeah. what is real masculinity? I've asked this question before and I've gotten some answers. People, some people will say, you know, um, well, I, I, Jordan Peterson is a better example of masculinity, mm -hmm. you know? And so your idea is that people that have philosophy and talk about masculinity is true masculinity. If a war came tomorrow, just post, like the, just asking this question, by the way, I'm not, maybe the answer is yes. I don't know. Do you think that like Jordan Peterson has the skills? If, if everything's taken away and you're in the wilderness, this is how I think yeah. my husband and me are surviving. Yep. We are surviving in the wilderness yep. and you're not because you are now married to a straight homosexual, yep. <laughs> you know, no. who like he's straight, but he's also a homosexual. Oh, you nailed it. They're, they're all gay. Everyone's gay. Yeah. You're, no, you literally nailed it. I had this conversation with someone the other day. I was talking to some guy. And I was saying that I don't trust a female pilot. And he said, why? I said, it's not because I'm a misogynist. It's because I think men are calmer under pressure. Yes. Men are calmer under pressure. And he goes, why do you think that? So like, why are you pretending you're confused as to why I think that? Haven't you gone through life and ever just seen a high pressure environment? Or is it just me when I've been in high pressure environments and I see women, they're not built for it. They're not supposed Unless to be. Unless it's kids, then it's the exact flip. Yeah, well, then like, they're ready to kill. happens with the kids, yes. Yeah, and then right. suddenly, like, I'm like, George is just like, I don't know, he's crying. I can't focus. I'm like, what do you mean he's crying? Like, that's like, yeah, yeah. I can do 20 things at once with children. Yeah. And you're like, oh, biology is real. Like, we have these natural proclivities and they're real. 100%. <laughs> like, absolutely true. And you're right. And, and there's men. I find it extremely weird that you see these men who are, begging for a female president. I mean, well, do you just, it, it just feels gay. It's gay. It's gay. It's very gay. I want a woman to be my boss. Like, it's just gay. <laughs> it's just gay. I don't, I don't know what else to say. It's so weird, these people. And you're right. They often say, oh, Andrew, you're not masculine because, you know, you're insecure. And I say, well, why am I insecure? Well, why do you have all those cars? Because I'm rich. Yeah, but why do you need to show off all those cars? It, it's kind of interesting. Like, the modern world was built by men trying to prove their capabilities and prove they could do things. That's what the whole world is. That's all it's ever been. We've now come along with this whole globo homo bullshit trying to convince you that a real man is so secure in himself he lets his wife get yeah. Okay, great. That's a real man. But truthfully, the real men were, I'm going to go over and try and cr cross Antarctica by foot because no one's done it. Well, that doesn't make sense. You'll freeze to death. Maybe, but I might do it. Right? So why do men, ha why are we in skyscrapers? Why have we gone to Mars? Why do men buy expensive things? Why do we do hard things? That's what masculinity has always been. That's how the world was built. But now they're going to come along and say, no, that's not masculinity. Masculinity is not trying to be the best version of yourself and proving to the world that you can do what others can't do. The reason I bought 65 cars is I can put them in a row and it looks funny. Yeah. Ha ha. Look, I can. Peacock. Look what I can do. Ha. Ah. That's it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to go any deeper. No, I don't have to drive them. I can't even name most of them. Mm -hmm. But they're now convinced you that true masculinity is being so sure within yourself that you don't have to prove anything to anybody. Well, if you don't have to prove anything to anybody, then you don't have any capability. So you're actually a useless idiot. And if you're going to sit there and be so arrogant that you believe you have no duty to the society or to your woman or to your ancestors, and you can just be secure in yourself, and I don't need to prove myself to nobody, and I'm just secure in myself. Well, you're one of the sheep being led to the slaughter mm -hmm. because you have absolutely no capabilities whatsoever. They'll say a real man, I got on arguments on podcasts all the time. They say a real man's secure and lets his girl have male friends. I'm like, there's a male friend line. Sure. There's a line. Hi, hi. How are you? Boom, boom. If, if my girl's going out on dates with some dude, like this is clown world. No, it's, it's peak clown world. And, and there are men who buy into this psyop. And it's kind of interesting when because one of the most common questions I get asked is, Andrew, why do you still talk? Why don't you just shut up and disappear? And it's like, well, you have two choices. You either fight against this programming that's out there 
Or I guess to a degree you accept it and then you have a new internal fight because your house is a mess because your woman doesn't respect you and you're depressed and sad and you have some mental condition. You've decided you have OCD or ADHD or some garbage you saw on the TV once. And you either fight an internal war or you fight a war against the external because this is really crazy what they're trying to implement. And I like the question you asked, like, what is a man? Truthfully, a man, I, I, I believe, is being able to do the things that are hard or do things you don't want to do because you're supposed to do them. I think that's what a man's always been. A man is supposed to be strong. He needs to be strong, so he has to become strong. That's his job. A man is supposed to be brave. It's not that you can't feel fear. It's that you have to be brave. Oh, an attacker's here. I'm afraid, but I'm a man, so I will go and engage the attacker. It is my job. And now we're teaching men, oh, you don't have to do what you don't feel like doing. You can do what you do feel like doing. And they somehow think that this is dismantling toxic masculinity when in fact it's actually doing the opposite because men are born with an innate propensity for violence. And then you have men who rape and kill and murder and school shooters. When you tell men to act out their feelings, you have some little idiot who's been on drugs his whole life for some imaginary mental condition. This is why you get school shooters in the first place. You should be being taught stoicism, not this garbage. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no one can even answer what a man is. They need to be aggressive. I see this. I, I now have two sons. My son, he he wants to go to war. He wants to be a Spartan. He yep. wants us to send him into the wilderness yep. and he's going to come back in two weeks, like the beginning of the movie 300, you know, yep. and see if he survives. I'm like, okay, this is innate. He wakes up, he grabs a sword. Him and my, uh, my, and my husband just instantly go at it, you yep. know? And I'm yep. like, dude, please just come to me if you want to hug. Like, I just don't, I don't want to fight. I don't yep. want to say to you, I don't want to wake up and grab swords and fight you. Yeah, yeah. Come to mommy when you need love. And when he's sick, he comes to mommy, yeah, yeah. you know, but when he's feeling good, he wants nothing to do with mommy. He wants yeah. to go fight. He's like, he wakes up and goes, Goes, where's my father? And he's holding a sword. You know, and I'm Jeez. just like, uh, think he's in there. Yeah, yeah, right? You yeah. know what I mean? And that's beautiful. And people want to suppress that, yeah. you know, and 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 you well, they fear it. They fear it, yes. And they want to suppress that aggression, that natural aggression. And I'm like, no, like, you know, you want to curate that in a way that, yes, if something happens to this family, yeah. I want to make sure that everyone can de defend this family in the right way. My job is to take care of the children. Like it is, it is my husband's job to be able to go out and hunt and shoot and fish and do all the things that he does yeah. with, you know, with his guy friends when they go on these trips and go hunting. Like they need to be able to survive in the wilderness. And now we've created these straight homos yeah. who are like, well, I read the New York Times every day. And I'm so, so I'm quite educated on this oh, topic that, of vaccines that, that, so I can keep my family safe from the invisible virus. Well, well, this is the thing where everything comes back to the propensity for violence, right? So I, you sit and you talk to these people who, these straight homos who say, I read the New York Times every day. And I sit there and I look at them and I just think, if I grabbed you by your neck, you know, I say it in my videos, I grab you by your throat. I say it, but I mean it. Yeah. I mean it. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is, is violence. The bottom line is how capable you are defending yourself and the people you care about. That's the bottom line of masculinity. What's crazy is in the West, especially, is we're importing all these people who understand this, right? We're importing a whole bunch of people who grew up in a very violent world and they understand that violence is a solution to problems sometimes. And they understand they may get caught, but they might not, right? And, and we're raising a native population of men who believe violence is never the answer and that violence doesn't exist. They're pacifists. They don't believe in violence. Oh, you don't believe in violence. So if I break into your house, you don't believe in violence? Or you do believe in violence, you just want the police to be violent for you because you're a So you believe in it just the same because you'll call the cops. If you'd ever call the cops, you believe in violence because you just want to do it by proxy. So everyone believes in violence. They just want to be detached from it. We want to pretend we live in a world where violence isn't real. Violence is the underpinning of absolutely everything. And I don't think many people also understand that large, large wars often bring a period of peace. Most people seem to understand that. You have World War II and then there's peace that comes afterwards, although that's arguable because the American military industrial complex has been at war ever since World War II. Nobody talks about they had World War II and everyone talks about that one. Then there's the Forgotten War in Korea. Then you got Vietnam and then you got the first Gulf War. They never stopped going to war. <laughs> They've been at war permanently the whole time. Which is why they had to delink the dollar from gold because everyone worked out they were printing too many dollars, blah, blah, blah. But large periods of peace also bring war. There's, it's cyclical. If you have a large war that brings about the population's desire for peace, well, the reason there's a big desire for peace is because the materials have been depleted and the manpower has been depleted and the people are tired, of course. But then if you have a long period of peace, you start to replenish your manpower and you start to replenish your materials. And then the other countries around you start to do the same thing. So you try to implement trade deals or some kind of black ops, or you try and sabotage X, Y, Z. So your country does better to make sure that you maintain hegemony over that scenario. And over time, if it's too peaceful, it's like a pressure cooker is going to blow up. We have men now living in these peaceful 
even though I wouldn't even call them peaceful anymore, times thinking that war isn't coming or that there's not going to be some degree of there's going to be a day where you're going to have to wake up and go, "Uh oh, today's the day, right? And even if it's not physical, it certainly is it certainly is spiritual what we're doing now. You cer it's certainly already D-Day spiritually. When I saw here in Romania, the most Christian nation in, 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 in Europe, the most Christian nation in the world, that the government, because they're an America cup effectively, wouldn't give permit protests, protest permits to Christians after what France did. They wouldn't give the permits for some reason, or they delayed it. They said, yeah, take a few months. No one will care in a few months. They know that. I had to go stand out there, right? I was amazed there weren't more people out there. But this is now we're already at D-Day where you have to be prepared to sacrifice yourself, at least spiritually, at least for what you at least for what you believe. And I guess the alternative is just to go to bed at night and feel like a coward. I don't know. I maybe for some men that's better to just look in the mirror and know they were a but ah, at least I'm not in jail. I would be sleeping perfectly fine in jail right now. Because I know I went for the right reason. I'd be sleeping fine. Right. So it's, it's truly incredible. You're right. These, these straight gay men who have this very strange view on the world where they've tried to redefine masculinity and take it away from what it truly is, because truly masculinity is the ability to say no. And if you're going to say no, you have to defend your ability to say no. That, that's it. You can't say no if you don't defend it. Right. right. No, you can't come here. Well, we're coming anyway. That was a fight. Mm -hmm. Right. It's kind of interesting. There's, I've seen some things on the internet where they say, do men really look at each other and think about fighting each other all the time? No, not really. No. But if I walk in a room and there's seven or eight men my size, it does cross my mind. Like, do I know who they are? Right. It's just like, because we live in that world, right? But all these men who can't defend the ability to say no now find themselves in this weird quagmire where they're like, well, I can't really say no to anything because I can't defend it. So I'm going to have to say yes to everything like a but I need to find a way to look like I'm somehow important and masculine. So let me put a, a, a feather in my ear, in my earring, and, and read the New York Times. And it's, half of these people I, I can beat up, which is the problem. But this is, this is a true story you're going to love. Is It actually made me think about just exactly what you're talking about when we talk about these straight homos. I was at a restaurant the other day with children. Okay? I'm sitting with children having pizza. At this another gay Zionist got out of nowhere, because he pretends to be a fan and then gets in my face with the camera and starts calling me an anti-Semite. If you want to see me, I've, I have pledged on this show, the only time I will ever get arrested is if you come up to me when I'm with kids. Yeah. That is mama bear. That yeah. is like mama bear takes out the papa bear when you're with 100%, 100%. kids. 100%. And so once I got someone to just like move the children, I went up to, he's with his wife. Okay. His wife allowed him to do this. If my husband ever went up to a wife and child, like a woman and children, and he thought it was his six, three, get to my corrupt, face. Yeah. I got so close. I think he started realizing like I was going to fight him. Like I was literally just like, do you understand? Like I was so close to his face. I was like, you are a coward. Yeah. You are pathetic. I was like, I looked at his sons. I said, you should be ashamed of this. This is the opposite of what a man is. Yeah. His job, his instinct should be when he sees a woman and children to protect it. 100%. I go, your, your, your father reads the New York Times, thinks everything of the New York Times tells him is real. And he suddenly got like, you know, very kind of intimidated. I said, post the picture. Yeah. Post the, the video that you shot of me because I'm going to make you as famous as you want to be. Yeah. Still has not been posted. Yeah. Please, if you are watching, post it. Like th this straight homo needs to become famous. And I said to his wife, you should be ashamed. You know, you think this is a man to come up to children and a woman because you read something in the New York Times that told you Candace was an anti-Semite because she doesn't support BB Net and Yahoo blowing children to smithereens. Like that, that is your worldview now that I, I, this means I hate all Jews. Like it's, it's such a nonsense, but this is the average man now where I was like, he needs to understand, like he, this man needs to have his ass beat. And I say that in the most honest sense, like you should be required as a man to be in a fight. Yeah. Like, because it, it changes something within you. 100%. Because you think you're fighting a tough battle because you're walking up to a woman and children to talk about BB to Net defend and the New York Times. Yeah, like, you're Bro. just like you're a straight homo. Bro, yeah, hundred like, percent straight homo. It's it's clown world. You know, it's funny. This reminds me of a story I haven't told the story. But he actually... would have never done that if it was you sitting. With oh, your never, 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 never in a million years. Mm. Because he would have realized right then we're fighting. Yeah, right now. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. At, you know, it's interesting. I have, for the most hated man in the world, I have truly in life never had up until this story I'm about to tell a negative interaction with anybody. Everybody comes up to me and they're a fan or if anyone dislikes me, they don't really say anything. I've never had a negative, negative interaction with anybody until about three weeks ago. It was during the World Cup and there was an England game. We were watching it here in Bucharest in like a public area and there was some American girl and I went toilet and on the way out the toilet, she filmed me on TikTok and said, human trafficker on TikTok. Mm -hmm. 
And I stopped and I turned around and I saw her and she kind of put her phone away. And I was like, but did you say that? She goes, no. It's like, you just filmed me said I'm a trafficker. She goes, no. I said, okay. So anyway, I went, I walked, went right up to her, walked up to her and said, if you think I'm a human trafficker, you're allowed to say it. You're a girl. I'm not going to hit you. But if you think I'm a human trafficker, you're allowed to say it. I'm just saying, why would you film it? And then deny saying it. You don't know my story. I'm happy to tell you if you care. I don't know your story. Why did you film that? Why did you say that? And she's sitting there with her man and her man goes, oh, I don't think this is necessary. I said, my friend, you're a man. Mm. I will kill you. <laughs> And I turned back to his girl and he just sat there and never said another word. <laughs> he just sat there while I berated his woman. Yeah. Then I went back downstairs. I saw them arguing and then they left, right? So she, I guess she got in an argument with her man for not defending her, but the man understood. I can't, I can't fight. What can I do? Yeah, what are right? you doing? What do you do? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Another straight homo and some silly woman. Mm -hmm. But it was an interesting, interesting dynamic. But when you say you want a man who will defend you completely. Right. Even her, as stupid as she is, and even her loser man, she expected it's like the expectation you have. And then the, the card got pulled and I guess he changed his mind. Right. So. Exactly. And, and he probably wasn't happy that she did it. You of know? course. Like, of course. It could, well, well, that's it. Right. Because he's like, now, why have you put me in a position where I have to die over your stupid f TikTok? Yeah. Completely right. But these straight homos, it's very interesting. I love the point you just made about how he feels like he's defending society. Has, to, to, would Israel give a shit about him? Mm -hmm. It's, it's really incredible. It's really incredible how people will get pulled into psyops of things that don't even matter, mm. right? There are so many things in the world that matter today. If, if anxiousness was a disease or if you could feel like if panic attacks were real, which I don't believe they are, sometimes after a day of work, I feel like this world is a mess. Sometimes after a day of scrolling Twitter and seeing everything happening, you're a bit like uneasy. You're like, how do I sleep now? What am I supposed to do? How do I prepare for these things? And I guess I'm one of the most equipped people on the planet because I'm fortunate enough to have a bunch of passports and a bunch of money. Most people don't even have that. And it's it's really crazy that with all of this going on, all the things people should have a vested interest in, they can get psyoped and distracted into some complete bullshit, you know? Uh, yeah, and you're exactly right. It's just we, we've lost traditional masculinity. And so when people create that dynamic when they're like, well, this is what it actually is. Every person that they present uh, being a truer example of masculinity, I just, I encourage, I push back on that, which is just like, if this was a time of war, yeah. who would you want? If, like the natural order of things is like men need to be masculine. Or if they call the cops, right? When you call the cops, what kind of man do you want? Right. Do you, do you want a man who turns up who's big and burly and who's going to take action and, and tackle someone to the ground and make affirmative decisions? Or do you want someone who's going to sit there and philosophize over, oh, maybe he's not even a criminal maybe like, what, which, what is a man like when 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 is the fan feminism disappears instantly mm -hmm. it always does right so all of it is just built inside of the society a lot of it is men's fault also you talk about how women are attacked with this feminism garbage from a young age and you're completely true it's completely true and you're right i was watching a taylor swift concert and she was uh she has this famous line in one of her songs i don't know her songs i'm not a swifty unfortunately Me neither. but she says uh something 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 Something, 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 something. Guys, I have, I have no eggs left. No, I'm good. <laughs> uh, the patriarchy, she says. And all these little girls are sitting there going, the patriarchy. And I'm like, I blame the fathers because the patriarchy built that stadium. And the patriarchy put that soundstage together. And the patriarchy paid for those little girls' tickets to go and watch that so men also have a part to play. Men have become so cucks. They're going to allow their daughters to go there and sing about how much they hate them. They'll wonder why their daughter will grow up and not listen. My daughter is not being, one, she's not listening to that. Two, I'm not sending her ever. I wouldn't allow her to go. But three, there's no way on God's green earth I'm paying for it. Like it's, it's also so crazy what position men have been put in. And if you say that to a man, these straight homos, they're going to sit there and go, ah, I'm secure. I'm a real man. You, you don't let your daughter listen to Taylor Swift? Huh. Call yourself a man? <laughs> Bro, it's the it's it's crazy what level uh, the Western society is sunk to, and what's scary is that we live in a world where we think the West is the whole world because we live in the West. It's really interesting. I don't know. Did you ever see that conversation on the BBC News between a Chinese 
it was some Chinese guy who worked for the Chinese government, and they were discussing about the electric vehicles between China and America, uh, England. No, I you didn't. You ever see it? It's really interesting, and I don't want to misquote it, but I think people can find it and send it to you. They were asking, they were saying that China produces 90% of the electric vehicles, and the UK is concerned about that they produce too many electric vehicles, and that the UK wants to produce some more electric vehicles because they don't want China to have a complete hegemony over the future when we use EVs, et cetera. And the Chinese member, and they were talking about competition between the two countries. They said, how do you feel about UK trying to compete with you in the electric vehicle market? And the, the member of the Chinese government said, we see the UK as a country that was historically important that we'd like to have good relations with. But when it comes to population, when it comes to production capacity, when it comes to safety on the streets, when it comes to educational performance, when it comes to uh, the ability to project force, the UK is, cannot compete with China in any regard. Right. They're historically believe it's still World War II, but effectively they're a small island far away who we'd like to have good relations with, but we do not see as a competitor or a threat in any regard ever. Mm. He just nailed it. Like, who the f*** are the UK? That's pretty much what Putin said, by yeah. the way, too. It's like, yeah. the, 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 this is behind. The system is old. Yeah. Like, who cares? Yeah. That's right. Completely right. So in the West, we think, ah, the West is the center of the world. But truthfully, we're not the center very much at all. There's a lot of countries in the world that don't see us as important as we see ourselves. And we don't have a population as large as most of the rest of the world. We don't have the natural resources. We don't have the capability to produce anything. And we're now entering a dynamic where our men, because it's going to be our people against other people, right? In the, especially in the bipolar world, our men and their and their pussyfooted approach to life are going to be pitted against men who are prepared to fight and die for real. Yep. And 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 we're going to see how that all works out. I guess the idea of the Western elites is that they can just continue to use the dollar to subjugate these nations, and that they can use AI and machines. I mean, for or right just now, just launch a world war out of nowhere. Yeah. You can reset everything by bombing and exploding, and then stealing people's That's resources. That's right. Or having better technology. We think, ah, oh, we don't need real men in the army because we've got better tech, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we'll see how that all works out. But um, I think the next 100 years are going to be very interesting when we see that. I mean, we can look at it right now. Let's look at it right now in the UK. Three little girls were stabbed. The girls that were stabbed were the same age as my daughters. I have two daughters age four. Three little girls were stabbed to death. A man shouldn't have to feel what, what a blade is like entering his body, let alone a little girl. It's disgusting. I have seen zero conversations about how to protect little girls. All I see are the, the straight homos marching, talking about how they're not racist. What the f*** are you even doing? Right. Have you lost complete context of the situation? Every single conversation should be about how to protect children. And there should be nothing off limits. We shouldn't be afraid to discuss the fact that if people come from X country, they commit violent crime at a 300% higher rate than if they come from other countries. Because everyone talks about the UK being racist. It's probably one of the least racist places on the planet. You want to see racism? Go anywhere else. Japan. Japan. Africa. Yep. They're racist in Africa. They're racist in the Arab world. Everyone's racist. We're the least racist place. And instead of marching to protect little girls, the man who stopped the knife attacker should be a national hero. He should be everywhere. I haven't even seen his face. They don't want to show him because they don't want to remind people the little girls were stabbed. Instead, they wanted to divert the whole conversation to don't be racist. And now we have all these straight homo men walking around. We showed the far right. Yeah, don't be racist. As if they've achieved something. You've forgotten the argument completely. When the knife wielding attacker is near you, you're going to piss your pants and run. And now you're walking around saying, don't be racist. Now I agree with don't be racist, but if you think if you are asinine and stupid enough to believe that if you're going to allow thousands of people into your border unchecked, that some of those people are not bad people, you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't even say that you're too stupid to conceptualize that. I'd say they're too cowardly to admit it because they're too scared to be racist. So now they're too scared to admit that by refusing to refute that idea, they're letting bad people in. They're going to say, no, all 1 million we let in are all good. They're all doctors and they're all physicists. You don't have to be racist to understand. It's not about skin color. If people come from a war zone, they've seen trauma and they're not going to be particularly balanced all of the time. I would argue if, you see, if a child sees their parents blown to smithereens, they're not going to grow into a pretty balanced, happy, normal, sane individual. 
They're coming from the worst places on the planet. Well, that, that's part of it, too. It's like, people, don't be racist, don't be this. I'm definitely a bigot. Like, I mean, I tell people this all the time. I'm like, that's street smarts, right? Yep. Predicting what I can garner from just looking at you, the Power vibes you're giving, yep. the vibes you're giving, what can I understand about the, what I'm under? I don't like, I don't trust you. I don't like the way you're moving. I don't like the way you're dressed. Now they're training people to go, having those gut instincts that keep you alive are bigotry, racism, homo homophobia. It's like, uh, um, yeah, uh, you're telling me this is a party with all homosexual men. Yeah, no, my son, my young son's not going, yeah. right? Oh my gosh, how dare you say that? Like, how, it, this is homophobic. This is heterophobic. This is all of these words really, in my view, meant to just delude people away, like from trusting their gut instincts. Your gut mm -hmm. is divine, yep. okay? Your gut is telling you something's not right. Yep. Like, uh, the person in the classroom says he's a non-binary person who believes that, like, you know, age limit should be evaporated and he's teaching your kindergarten teacher and your 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 son and you're allowing that to happen because you're fearful that people at school are going to call you a bigot like i'm a hey i'm mama bigot okay yeah, i put yeah. those i'm mama bigot yeah. i am a bigot so yeah. let me figure out what i have to know about you because yeah. i'm gonna let you know whether or not you, whether or not you're allowed access to my children and so i tell people do not allow them to call you a bunch of names that essentially rinses you from that divine gut instinct that you have that's the holy spirit saying you yeah. don't trust this person for whatever reason and then you have the government telling you that whatever reason that you have, you know, is not right because it's some ism, sexism, misogyny, homophobia, it's, whatever. It's pattern recognition. And they don't want you to have basic pattern recognition skills anymore. And that's what's so crazy, especially with all the things you just said, absolutely nailed it. And especially with this racism arguing. Like, would you, you hire a male nanny? Bro, you must get this. <laughs> you must get this more than me, right? Because I'm mixed half black, half white. You were black, right? So they must say, why are you racist? Why have you turned on your own race, et cetera? It's not even really truly about race. Like I, in jail, I saw people lose their minds, right? I saw people in jail lose their minds and I saw that they weren't the same anymore. I didn't want to be around those people. I would avoid them as much as possible. I hate the idea of them now being loose in society. That's just jail. In a European nation, okay, it's the worst jails in Europe, Eastern Europe, it's bad. But, you know, we're now talking about war-torn countries, which we've blown up. We have bombed and people are seeing their families destroyed. People are seeing children headless on the street. You're telling me these people are now sane and they can just come here and get a job and pay their taxes. Is that what we're going to pretend we believe? Otherwise we're deemed to be racist. It's not about the color of their skin. It's about all the things they've been through. And I don't want them in the society. But now, like I said, three little girls are stabbed to death. And people are marching around pretending that we need more of these people. In fact, they're so desperate to virtue signal is not just, okay, they're fine. It's actually, we want more. Look, I'll prove to you how unracist I am. Let in more people from the third world. Which it, I'm fine with. They just need to go live with the people that blew up the third world. Yeah. Go go stay at Hillary Clinton's house. Go stay at Tony Blair's house. Go stay, go stay with the families that made money blowing up, you know, uh, Libya yeah. and, and getting rid of Gaddafi. I'm yeah. totally cool with that. The yeah. people who wanted that war and supported it, you open your homes to the people who, who are dealing with that trauma of what you did that, you know, flood them out of their nations and stuff. Like we've created the issues. Yeah. And then you're telling people that never wanted the wars in the first place, that they're the ones that have to invite these people that are dealing and hating the Western world into our homes. It's a nonsense. Well, that, exactly. And that's globalism. Go to it, Israel. Well, exactly. Well, that's... that's it, well, <laughs> they love war. Go to Israel. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's globalism in a nutshell, right? Because globalism is effectively people who are detached from the common man's issues, making problems, profiting from it, mm -hmm. and then all of the mess gets dumped on the common man. Yeah. That's what basically happens every single time with every single thing they do. And so I think that is the problem with people like you, people like me, people like Ye, is that we're giving people the permission to be themselves. It's so interesting you say that because the first time I was ever super heavily attract, attacked by the Matrix is when I said depression wasn't real. And the backlash was incredible. Because drugs, they yeah. drug these kids out of their minds. That's right. They were so desperate to try and convince me or demonize me for saying depression wasn't real. And I was like, look, feeling depressed is real, but I believe you have control over your own mind and it's down to you to fix it. You don't need drugs and you haven't caught a disease. You just need to change your scenario, change your settings. Now, PTSD is real. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, I had it after jail. I know that mental health issues are real, of course. What I'm trying to say is that depression as an idea in the West, is so massively overprescribed that it no longer has any it's value. It's just sadness. It's just sadness. You're just sad. That's yeah. normal human emotion. Like, or, you know, go or, outside, go for a run, hang out with your friends. That's right. I, I see that's going to keep coming. Like I, waves of sadness. We're all sad. We get sad sometimes. Completely. I see it all the time. I see men to me, oh, I'm depressed. I look at them and say, I'd be depressed too if I was you. You're a loser. Yeah. Like, of course you're depressed. Your life's because you're a loser because you've achieved nothing. So it's not a disease. You've got work to do.
That's the bottom line of it. We've overprescribed it to the point where it has no point at all. I'm sure 1% of depressed people might have something wrong with them, of course, fine. But if you're going to say everybody has depression, I don't even know what the statistics are, but I read something very scary about the amount of people in America that are on some kind of psycho psychotropic They start drug. them young. They'll be like, oh, you have Is anxiety. Is it like 20% or 30% of people or something? It's it has to be more. It has to be more genuinely like everybody is on these drugs and they know long term that these drugs eventually make you crazy because you're playing with the chemistry of your brain. You should never do that. See, I apply this to my current circumstance. I apply this to my current problem because the way you always attack men to try and damage your influence is sexual crimes, right? So I, I, I'm applying this to my own case. Three different countries, they've called over 2,000 women who I've ever known in my life. And they managed to find these two idiots. And you've done a breakdown of the case, which I super appreciate. And they haven't found anyone else, thankfully. But if 30% of the people they're calling are on mind-altering drugs, that's scary to me. I'm thinking, wait, as a full-grown man, if you ever get famous and you ever talk against the Matrix and you ever have any kind of money and influence because your ability to speak freely is directly correlated with your insignificance, you can only be, you can only talk freely when nobody listens. If people listen to you and you talk freely, you soon realize that there really isn't that much freedom of speech because they will come for you and they will try and wreck you with everything they can. Right. It reminds me of a point on freedom, which I want to talk about quickly. But now we're saying that this percentage of the population are on drugs. I always found this interesting when they say, ah, we've been through his past. We found these people. What percentage of the population are autistic? What percentage of the population are mentally ill? And then what percentage of the population are on mind-altering drugs or depressed of some kind or anxious or whatever they're on? And then we're going to say and find someone from 11 years ago and say their word, their eyewitness testimony without any other proof is golden. It's it's just so crazy. It's being lazy Ford. It's, 20 years ago, yeah, it happened. It's, it's scary to me. Mm. It's actually very scary. The point I wanted to make on freedom is very interesting because you've experienced how the Matrix tries very hard to shut you up. And they try to intimidate you. They try and ruin your life and intimidate you. That's effectively what they try and do. And it takes a particularly stubborn type of person. I am. I'm a Taurus. I'm just like <laughs> I, I'm ready. I'm built different. I, I, I I'm built different. I, I love being a thorn in their side much more than whatever they can do to me. Yeah. It's like I'm in jail. I'm like, yeah, but I pissed them off. Yeah. Yes. And, and they hate how happy we are too. Oh, completely. And they're like, this shouldn't be the result. They're we've done, miserable. We've done the studies. Yeah. And when once we do these psychological attacks and we psychologically terrorize them and their family, they should be fatigued and broken. That's right. And then we just emerge and we're like, hey, you'll stand it. <laughs> they can't stand it. But um. Another one of my theories about the LGBT whole thing and the reason that they're marching in the street is, of course, they're trying to get everybody's children. But I also believe that it's part of propping up the false guise of freedom, right? Because what the West has built itself on is a very thin culture and it's built itself on the idea that everybody can get rich. Nothing unifies us. If you look at here in Romania, even in this country, everyone has the same language, they have the same religion. They all watch the same TV shows growing up right? They have the same folk stories. They do the same thing at Christmas. Everyone has a similarity amongst them. So even if they disagree politically, there's a lot that unifies the people, which is why it's a safe society. I remember when we went to school when we were young, you'd go and you'd talk about the TV show from the night before that everybody watched. Everybody. And now we don't have that anymore, right? So the only thing that unifies people in the West, because there's nothing that unifies us. We don't agree on the flag. We don't agree on religion. We don't, not the skin co same skin color. We don't speak the same language. There's nothing that unifies us except this idea that we can become rich. Go to the West, Get rich, be nice to people. But now everyone's realizing you're not going to get rich. And this is where the problems are coming because they're realizing the American dream is a sham. And it's a lie. So we have this very thin culture. And we say to these other countries, ah, well, they have thicker cultures. Their cultures aren't thin and a thick culture is good for the cohesion of society, but they're not free and we're free. And then I sit and think, well, if you speak against authority in the West, they teach you a lesson so you're not actually free. So how do they prop up this false idea of freedom? What they do is they put the freaks to the front. So what they do is they push the freaks to the front. So they say, look, this person chopped their d off. We're free. In other countries, you can't chop your d off. It's like, okay, that's fine. But, but I am not free to do anything important, like speak against power, like speak against APAC. You're free to hurt yourself. You're free to, yeah, you're free to do dumb d You're not free to actually talk about anything important ever. And I feel like one of the reasons why they're promoting all this degeneracy is to try and keep this bullshit idea of freedom alive. Because if they took that away, you'd wake up and realize, oh, okay, this is actually no different than most of the world. And I'm not going to attack only the West for this. You can't talk against Putin and Russia, and you can't talk against Islam and Saudi, and you can't talk against the king of Laos. I'm sure you're going to pay a price. That's how the world actually is. We're the only ones who are lying about it, sitting and saying, no, you can't talk. You, you can, we're free. We're free. We're free. The truth is you can't talk against authority at all. And to try and distract everyone and keep this bullshit 
dream of freedom alive, they're going to push freaks to the front, which is why I think that the freaks are getting more and more outlandish because people are starting to realize that the freedom isn't real and they're starting to feel the cage and close. So as people are starting to sit there and realize, wait, maybe I don't live in a free country. Maybe my government is owned. Maybe they are all homosexual pedophiles. Maybe I am paying too much taxes just to blow up children. Maybe nobody has my interests at heart. Maybe my elections aren't real. Maybe my children are being brainwashed. Maybe my streets are unsafe because they refuse to police them properly. Maybe all these drugs could be stopped. Maybe, wait, 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 wait. He's chopped his off. There's a man in a dress. It's free. <laughs> Freedom. And I really think- You could never have a man wear a dress in Putin's uh, Russia. That's right. I, so, like, I think I want to go there. That, sounds uh, like, yeah, I don't want men wearing dresses. And that's the most crazy thing about it, is that trying to show this freedom, they're actually showing to anybody with a brain things we don't even want to see, right? You can take that away. That's fine. Let's take that away. Another thing about talking against government, because I was talking to somebody about this, and they said, okay, well, then why are you saying America's so bad when you can't talk about against government anywhere else? And I said, well, the reason for that is because if you're in Russia, you know who your boss is, right? I don't personally disagree with Putin, so I wouldn't want to talk against Putin. But if you live in Russia and you do want to talk against power, you know who you're talking against. Our biggest problem here in the West is that we don't even truly, really know who we're talking against. I know that the LGBT homo mafia are in charge somewhere, which I know that's clear because they can in the Senate building and nothing happens. So that's obvious. But it's like, who? And we're, and we're spending all our time going down rabbit holes of Israel or Big Farm or military industrial complex or global homo or you're like, who is even in charge of this mess? Davos, WEF. That, that's the thing that's most scary to me. It's not the fact that we can't speak against power because you can't in a lot of places. It's that we're not even allowed to know who the powerful are because then they're accountable. It's all just theories. If they were to say it's this person, this person, and this person, those people would be in a lot of trouble very quickly. Mm -hmm. So they've removed their attachment to anything. So there's not even any accountability anymore in the West. That's what's truly scary. I'm just asking, I would like to know who, who's, who's in charge here. I'd like to just wake up and say, you know, you walk into a restaurant and everything's Manager, <laughs> why is there cockroaches? What's going on? I'd like to just go, well, who's the manager of the West now? Who's actually in charge of any of this mess anymore? At least in other countries, you get the good fortune of knowing who your boss is. Right. Right? Yeah, I keep trying to figure out why I'm supposed to hate Putin. I'm like, okay, so he doesn't let people desecrate churches. Um, you can't just take your boobs out as a woman and like say you're protesting and stand on top of like a statue of Jesus Christ. I think I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I know I'm supposed to be hating this. You're telling me this is authoritarian. This is authoritarian. But what you guys are doing, locking up people for peacefully protesting on January 6th, hunting grandmothers is not authoritarian that's right. because we're what women are allowed to be whores. Yeah. Like I, I'm like everything about this, like I, if that's going to be the boss, that makes more sense to me than the people, the deep state, the homosexual agenda, the pedophilia that's being promoted. The pedophiles are allowed to write articles and protect other pedophiles. Sounds a lot better to me to have him as my boss than the, like you said, the invisible bosses or maybe one boss who knows that we're fighting and we see that they're perverse. Yeah. And I totally agree with you. Yeah, he's a competent nationalist, which is what anybody with a brain should want for their country. You should want a competent nationalist who puts your interest above the interests of anybody so else. So Biden showering with his four-year-old daughter and, and the whole mainstream media colluding to hide the diary. We have Hunter Biden smoking crack and sleep, sleeping with people that look way too young, yeah. you know, talking about incest on text messages and the entire mainstream media colluding to cover these stories. Yeah, no, I think I want to try the other boss if I can, just for a second. I just want to try to work there for a week Absolutely. and see what happens. Absolutely. So we, and, and you're completely right. We say, oh, Russia is not a free country because, you know, you can't do LGBT insanity. And that's the only thing they can really come at them for. They can't come at them for, they've arrested one-tenth of the people the UK have arrested for Facebook posts. Wow. So I think Tucker highlighted this. In the UK, I think it was in 2022, they arrested 4,500 people for their social media comments. In Russia, it was 400. So the UK is 10 times worse for policing speech than Russia. Free country, right? But all oh, Russia is not free because we, they, we don't allow them to, they're not allowed to poison the children. So they're not free. So it's actually the thing that's most scary about this freak show is the reason they're pushing it so hard to the front is because they're trying to keep this imaginary balloon of freedom and the American dream and all this garbage ahead because we have a very thin culture. Nothing's unifying us in the West besides the idea that somehow we're free and that somehow we'll one day get rich. That's it. And that's what's so scary. You know what I found interesting about American culture? You know the eclipse that was recent. There was an eclipse mm -hmm. where they, the solar eclipse, it was like a few months ago. I can't remember. It was going through a few states. And I was reading on Twitter, they were talking about how the eclipse is coming and you need to be careful because it's going to be dark for two minutes and beware of crime and all this shit. And I sat there thinking, 
American culture is so thin that if it gets dark in the middle of the day for two minutes, there's going to be crime? People are going to rob cars? Is that how close we are to apocalypse? Is it that bad? Like, even we talk about Ukraine-Russia war, even though I agree with Putin, I think he's completely justified. The Ukrainians and the Ukrainian government, who I have distaste for, but the Ukrainian people, they're still in lines buying food. It's war. They're in a line with money buying food during war. America, it'd be looting. It would be fires. It would be free for all within two minutes. We are on the absolute precipice of societal breakdown all of the time. And the only thing that's keeping it together is everyone sitting around going, don't worry, you'll be rich one day, you'll be rich one day, while the political class just rape the tax base for as long as they can before they disappear into the sunset. How long until this all goes wrong? I mean, it's very, it's an interesting thing to observe from afar. It's super interesting. Yeah, I think about it every day. I tell people I have an apocalyptic mindset. I've learned to grow vegetables. Yeah. My husband hunts, he fishes. We're going to be good in the middle of the forest and we're going to survive. And yeah. you better think deeply about who you would want. I say this all the time. In your tribe. And you're going to realize that it all comes down to basic survival skills. Yep. Can you hunt? Can you shoot? Can you fight? Can you grow food? Yep. Can you take after the children? And the majority of Westerners are ill-equipped for those things. They're yep. like, well, I can receive the New York Times and read it and comprehend what they're telling me to believe, and that's going to be problematic. And so in conclusion, I would like you to speak to the straight homos. Because the straight homos, they need some guidance, you know? They need some guidance. It's they true. do. It's they true. think they hate you, but deep down they know that there's something that you're saying that really what they hate is what it was inside of themselves. There's like a cowardice within them that they hate, and so they have to attack you. And so we're going to get free advice. You don't even have to sign up for Hushley University. You don't even have to buy a Standis Cup. You're going to get free advice, all you straight homos out there, from Andrew Tate. And you can just implement this into your life. Andrew Tate, take it away. Sure. <laughs> All right, let me try and think of something which is going to be inspirational. So I'm going to whoop your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I should say <laughs> the reason they're a coward in the first place is because they're afraid of confrontation. But I want everyone at home to understand, especially if you're a man, that confrontation is certain and it's always going to be around. If you're a king, there's never been a point in human history where you were a king with an empire where people were not trying to take your empire from you. And if you're not a king with an empire, then you're a pawn in somebody else's empire and you're going to have your head chopped off for some reason anyway. Confrontation is certain. If you try to avoid confrontation, you're going to end up in confrontation with yourself. The reason these straight homos are so desperately sad, the reason they have ADHD and anxiety and depression, the reason they're sitting at home, even if they don't admit to these ailments, wondering why they're so unhappy all the time is because you're fighting an internal battle. Your monologue is different in your mind from what your spirit truly wants. You want to be respected. You want to be strong. You want to stand up for what you know is right. You want to be a man and you're just too afraid to engage the enemy. So you're going to self destruct. You're going to turn on yourself. There's a fire inside of you. There's a fire inside of absolutely every man. And you can either direct it at your enemy and do your very best to destroy him, or it's going to burn inside of you and eat you alive. You have to make a choice. The cowardice that you feel that prevents you from engaging the enemy is your biggest, is the biggest betrayal because now you're just engaging yourself. The battle's certain either way. So I strongly recommend you find who the enemy is and direct your efforts towards their destruction as opposed to sitting there allowing yourself to self-immolate. I think it's actually very sage advice. There is a fire in, in all of the men and it has to be directed in the right way. Well, Andrew, it has been a pleasure having you. This conversation is going to be so banned, so de demonetized. <laughs> Sorry. I don't care. I literally <laughs> don't care. I just, I, like I said, don't care about different because people need to hear it. And I also am very optimistic because I think that people are starting to recognize that we keep telling them the truth about what's happening in the world and it's taking them a while to catch up, but they're, there's enough distrust now in the mainstream media that people are starting to listen to independent voices and go directly to the source rather than allowing the mainstream media to tell them about those people and pretend that they're hateful because we believe in natural order, you know? All right, guys, that is a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Candace. We will see you next time.